Good day, class. I am Ma'am April May G. Agustin, and for today, we will be discussing another lesson, which is all about the historical development of the concept of life. So, this will be our lesson number one for second grading. So, we will study the origin of life, the evidence on the first forms of life, and the three domains of life. After going through this lesson, you were expected to, number one, to determine the contribution of the following scientists about the studies of the origin of life. Number two, to identify the evidences in the first form of life. And number three, to differentiate the three domains of life. Let us do this short activity. So as you can see on your screen, we have here the main word, which is the word life. You're just going to state anything that can be associated with the term life, origin, evolution, and the emerging pieces of evidences. You can type your answers to the comment section together with your complete name and your section. So that will serve as your attendance for this class. We all know that life is a characteristic that distinguishes physical entities that have biological processes such as signaling and self-sustaining processes. From those that do not, either because such functions have ceased or because they never had such functions and are classified as inanimate. The condition that distinguishes animals and plants from inorganic matter, including the capacity for growth, reproduction, functional activity, and the continual change preceding death. We Studies on the origin of life. Many scientists have dedicated themselves to find out how life first appeared on Earth, all in the name of curiosity, science, and discovery. Alexander Ivanovich Oparin Alexander Ivanovich Oparin is a Soviet biochemist who is notable for his theories about the origin of life and for his book entitled The Origin of Life. He also studied the biochemistry of material processing by plants and enzymes reactions in plant cells. John Scott Haldane John Scott Haldane is a physiologist famous for intrepid self-experimentation which led to many important discoveries about the human body and the nature of gases. Oparin and Haldane Hypothesis This hypothesis suggested that if the primitive atmosphere was reducing as opposed to oxygen-rich and if there was an appropriate supply of energy, such as lightning or ultraviolet light, then a wide range of organic compounds might be synthesized. The Oparin-Haldane hypothesis suggests that life arose gradually from inorganic molecules with building blocks like amino acids forming first and then combining to make complex polymers. The Haldane coined the term prebiotic soup or also known as the prebiotic atmosphere that consisted of an abundance of methane, ammonia, and water. This term became a powerful symbol of the Oparin Haldane view of the origin of life. The first idea to capture scientists' attention was the primordial soup. The notion that when Earth was young, the oceans were filled with, with simple chemicals important for life. This would eventually self-assemble into simple living cells. Harold Clayton Urey Harold Clayton Urey is a physical chemist who played a significant role in the development of the atom bomb, but may be most prominent for his contribution to theories on the development of organic life from non-living matter. Stanley Lloyd Miller 
Stanley Lloyd Miller is a chemist who made landmark experiments in the origin of life by demonstrating that a wide range of vital organic compounds can be synthesized by fairly simple chemical processes from inorganic substances. Miller Urey Apparatus Harold Urey and his student Stanley Miller tried to calculate the chemical constituents of the atmosphere of the early Earth. They based their calculations on the view that the early atmosphere was reducing. In order to do this, they simulated early Earth atmospheric conditions by creating a closed system which contained water, methane gas, ammonia, and hydrogen gas. Urey suggested that his student Miller should attempt to synthesize organic compounds in this type of atmosphere. Miller carried out an experiment in which he passed a continuous spark discharge at 60,000 volts through a flask containing the gases identified by Urey along with water. Furthermore, this electrical current was run through the laboratory setup to simulate the catalytic source of lightning that was present in the early atmosphere. Miller found that after a week, most of the ammonia and much of the methane had been consumed. The main gaseous products were carbon monoxide and nitrogen. In addition, there was an accumulation of dark material in the water. Few of the specific constituents of this could not be identified. But it was clear that the material included a large range of organic polymers. From the results of their experiment, they found that up to 15% of the carbon in the system was inorganic compounds that had formed in the system. This conclusion proved that organic molecules could be formed from inorganic molecules in Earth's early atmosphere. What do you think are the evidences of the first forms of life? Kindly use the comment section below and type in your answer. If one of your answer is fossils, then you are right. Fossils are one of the strongest pieces of evidence that show many life forms existed in Earth in the past 3.5 billion years. A fossil is any preserved remains, impression, or trace of any once living thing from a past geological age. Examples include bones, shells, exoskeletons, stone imprints of animals or microbes, objects preserved in amber, hair, petrified wood, oil, coal, and DNA. How do fossils form? Fossil formation Over long periods of time, particles piled up on the remains of organisms and eventually became sedimentary rocks, preserving the original body patterns of organisms. In talking about fossils, we all know that paleontology is the study of fossils. Paleontologists Paleontologists are the scientists who study fossils. They examine the age of fossilized organisms through radioisotope dating using radioactive materials such as the radioactive components of potassium and argon. They found remains of microscopic living cells called microfossils in rocks that formed 3.5 billion years ago after the Earth cooled and solidified. Microfossils A fossil or fossil fragment that can be seen only with a microscope.
existed in mats and formed layer structures called stromatolites. Stromatolites, a calcareous mound built up of layers of lime-secreting prokaryotes or single-celled organisms called cyanobacteria, the blue-green algae, and trap sediments found in Precambrian rocks as the earliest known fossils and still being formed in lagoons in Australasia. Cyanobacteria Cyanobacteria believed by scientists to be the first oxygen-producing organisms that helped evolve the Earth's early atmosphere into one that can support early life forms. As these microorganisms continue generating oxygen, other photosynthetic organisms evolve and increase the level of oxygen in the atmosphere. This increased the chance of more and more oxygen reaction ammonia, a reaction that results in the release of nitrogen into atmosphere. A rapid evolution of life occurred after oxygen became abundant. Let us now discuss the three domains of life. Life forms exist in different environmental conditions. There are organisms in soil, air, and even in freezing waters or deep sea thermal vents. This diversity of life constitutes many and varied lineages of organisms. Some lineages have gone extinct due to geological events brought by tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, extreme fluctuations in temperature, and rising water levels. In talking about the domains of life, Carl Richard Woos, who is a microbiologist and biophysicist, who became famous for defining the archaea, a new domain or kingdom of life in 1977 by phylogenetic taxonomy of 16S ribosomal RNA, a technique pioneered by Woos, which revolutionized the discipline of microbiology. Domain is being defined as the highest taxonomic rank of organisms in the three domain system of taxonomy, higher than the animal kingdom classification. The three domains of life includes bacteria, eukaryota, and archaea. Archaea Archaea, also known as ancient bacteria because they resemble the ancient prokaryotes. Their morphological and genetic characteristics differ from other forms of bacteria. They live mostly in extreme environments, near reef vents in the deep sea at 100 degrees Celsius, hot springs, acid waters, guts of cows, guts of termites, guts of some marine life forms, which produces methane. When we say guts, it is being defined as the lower alimentary canal or a part known as the intestine. Bacteria, also known as true bacteria or simply bacteria, constitutes a great portion of prokaryotic microorganisms, ecologically diverse, and some are found in water, soil, and other organisms. So there are two types of bacteria. Some are considered as aerobic, which means they need oxygen for them to live or survive, and some are considered as anaerobic, meaning to say they do not need oxygen to live or to survive. Eukarya, also known as eukaryotes, they have membrane-bound nucleus, have eukaryotic cells composed of membrane-bound organelles. It can be unicellular and multicellular. Examples of unicellular organisms are the protists and yeast, and the examples of multicellular organisms are the plants, fungi, and animals.
Thank you so much for attending my class today. And I hope that you have learned something. All the pictures and ideas used in the PowerPoint presentation are credits to the rightful owner.